Hi guys, Ryu here with Naritude for Blender. In this one, I'm going to show you how to quickly render um, a scene, okay? Like this one. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to grab a plane. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Go to side view. So tilde key and left. And then we're going to drop this down. So G, C and drop it down to somewhere here. You want to make a contact with the surface, okay? You don't want it to float. And you want to make sure you're going to get some contact shadows. So be precise with it. That's important. Now let's go to modifiers and solidify and solidify it down. Oh, wait, I'm using hard ups. I forgot about it. Muscle memory, guys. My bad. So let's go here and solidify and solidify it with this thickness, either down or up. In this case, we're going to go down because we are precisely set underneath this uh, thing. So let's make it a bit bigger. And let's duplicate this thing. So Shift D and G Y move it in here. R X and hold Control and just rotate it a bit. And S X make make it bigger. Now we're going to add a camera to this scene. Okay. In fact, let's move this plane a little bit to the uh, to the right. So we're gonna switch pivot point here to um, where is it? To cursor and RZ and rotate it on the cursor and you should be fine. Grab this vert here in the back, control shift B to bevel it like this. Are we good? Now we're gonna grab a camera, so shift A and add a camera. If I remember where it was here, there we go. And the camera's gonna get added in the um, unfortunately in the viewport here, right? And you're gonna have to manually position it. So, like I said in a previous video, ma install Machine Tools, which is a free add-on, and it's gonna make it very easy for you how to set the camera. Because all you need to do is set, you know, set your view like this, and then on the, all you do is press Page Down and Smart Cam, and then Page Down and Lock to View, and then Hold Control and Middle Mouse Button, click on this item and position your camera the way you want. Well, let's say we're gonna do something like this, okay? Uh, let's say this will do it, right. Maybe rotate it a little bit on this object, maybe like this. And let's increase the uh, uh, focal length. So page down and just scroll this one to maybe 85, so kind of like a portrait uh, portrait length. Uh, gonna give us a bit more compression. Uh, which is gonna look pretty cool. All right, so something like this, you know, should look all right. Okay, now page down and unlock from view, uh, so you know, camera doesn't move, which is peachy. Now we need to add some materials. Okay, so let's go to look dev here, and let's switch the um, this uh, matcap to something more soothing. Uh, I have my custom HDRI uh, HDRI installed, but you can use you know, either of these, I'm going to use a custom one. And if you want to install a custom one, all you need to do is click on this uh, option here and go to install and install HDRI file, save preferences and good, you're good to go. And HDRI files you can get from sites like um, HDRI Heaven, um, you know, they're free. So just go there and get it. The one I'm using is called Abandoned Slipway. So you can see it in here, by the way. So I have it set it up in Shader Editor as my permanent background. So that's the name of it. Abundant Slipway. Okay. Anyway, we will be talking about it a bit later. So let's add some materials. Okay. So let's go here and add a new. And we're going to add the principal BSDF. We're going to make it metallic. We're going to make it a bit darker. Right. And maybe not so dark, maybe like this. And change the roughness a bit. And we're gonna add clear coat and some clear coat roughness. Um, and I think we should be good. This one's gonna be a different one, so new. And we're gonna make it metallic as well. This one we're gonna make it maybe darker, a lot this. And a bit rougher, so kind of like a matte uh, material. Clear coat, clear coat roughness. And we're good to go. Select this one. Hold, select this one, hold shift, select this one, hold shift all the time, yeah? This one and this one at the end. 
go to this option here and copy material to select it, which will basically copy the mod to these items. And now you're good to go. Well, almost. What we're going to do now is uh, uh, shift a mesh and um, it can be a plane, whatever. Move it in here and then create a new material and change here to emission and make this emission. I don't know, maybe you can make it reddish or something. Uh, you know, make it a bit more bloomy and select this item, right click, uh, Control R and insert a loop here, C Control B, hold shift and scroll it, plus click on the emission, assign and delete this. Okay, bingo. Now click on the camera, Control 0 on, uh, Control zero on the, um, what do you call this thing? Numpad, that's the one. And we need something for the background, for I mean for the uh, foreground. So new, let's not make a metallic, shall we? Let's make it just dark and darkish. Select background, select this one and copy this, okay? In fact, this one could be a bit different. So um, select the background and remove this mod, new. And let's make it a bit darker, but not so dark. Or maybe darker than this foreground this could work anyway so now what we're gonna do is go to um cycles and in cycles you're gonna see this crazy pinkness right so now the reason for it is that you don't have any hdri installed and you need to go here so split your window by going to see like when i go here to the bottom my cursor changes uh, just drag it up i'm gonna drag a new window go here shader editor i want you to go to world now you will see nothing here, you will see something like this, okay, that's what you're gonna see. But what you need to do is go here to preferences and under add-ons enable node wrangler, okay, that's a um, blender native add-on. This will allow you to uh, click on this, and by the way, when you do this, right, select this box and save preferences and you're good to go. Then you're gonna be able to click on this background thing, Control T, which will add all these nodes, and then you can download the same HDRI file, um, you know, that you downloaded to this custom uh, look dev HDRI location, or just you know any other that you want. If you load it, you'll see that the same, basically the same one is loaded here and here. It looks a bit different because look dev is based on EV and the shading is a bit different, right? Now the cool thing about it is that you can switch it here to uh, EV under this top here, uh, because EV is a bit faster yeah? and you can rotate your background, okay? So like this um, light. Now you cannot see uh, my, but probably you can see the background on your image, but you can turn it off with by clicking this transparent option in here, okay? And when you rotate it on the axis, you can see that the environment rotates um, with it, right? So that's how it works. So click transparent and let's see this image, how it looks, this object, and you know, we're gonna position some kind of cool lighting in here. Maybe something like this, all right? This would do. Now, uh, you can change the strength of it in here too, but be careful, don't go too crazy with it. We're gonna go to 1.2 maybe, this this should do. And we can collapse it now. We need to set up our rendering scene, okay? So we're gonna go back to cycles because we're gonna render in cycles. And this floor, floor by the way, is a bit too, too bright. We're gonna make it a bit, you know, a bit darker, a bit more, maybe a bit more reflective. So gonna be some reflections from this, um, you know, um, light coming in and what we're gonna do now is this one could be a bit brighter too to be honest and also a bit more reflective maybe uh, maybe reflective is a bad idea hmm let me think about it this could work opens up the whole image so depending what kind of mood you're going for right anyway let's stick with this one and now what we're gonna do is we're going to set, set up the render engine, which is quite important. First of all, we go to Compositor, and probably what you're going to see is, uh, you know, something like this, right? All right. So what you need to do is um, go here to uh, Shift A and grab a vector, not vector, filter and denoise and put it in here, and then grab a filter and um, glare. 
and switch it to foglow then you need to go here to um to this top okay under passes and turn off and the noising date uh, turn on the noising data which will allow you to combine um noisy image to nor uh, sorry um control right click to cancel this yeah you can control right click to slush it the the connection uh, between the nodes uh the noising normal to normal and the noising albedo to albedo and all you know you set for the compositor go back to layout and now we're gonna go here to settings and cycles we're gonna go to samples and samples set to 250 uh, that's all you need on the light path is uh on the light passes we're gonna do uh, where is it? Uh, max bounce is this one. Six four 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 in zero the volume because we don't use volumetrics, so volume is fine. At zero, you can use reflective and refractive caustics. You don't need to, but you could. On the performance, that's important. You should change these tiles to. Now I cannot tell you what to change it to because it depends on your machine and setup. In my case, it's two forty eight. The default Blender one is sixty four, meaning. It's going to take 64 by 64 pixels, uh, kind of like a uh, squares, uh, into so when it's uh, rendering. So it's going to uh, render um, 64 by 64 each time, yeah? Mine is going to render uh, 248 at once, so more or less the whole image. And then uh, you need to go to system, and on the system you need to enable uh, your graphic card under CUDA. You could try rendering an op with optics, it, you know, could work as well. It's experimental, sometimes it doesn't work. Now you can turn on, on or off the processor, it depends on, on your system. In my case, the card goes faster than the processor. Uh, I mean, the rendering through card only goes faster than actually if I select both of them. So uh, there you go. And this should do you for rendering. So then all you do is go here and you can click on render image and then you need to wait. So when I collapse this image in here, and I'll show you how it looks, you, you, here you're going to have the um, remaining time, which is, as you see, just under one minute, which is because, I mean, which is which is why we're using the noiser, because that's that's how we can achieve these speeds. And, you know, your time might be at slower or longer, but it, like I said, it depends on settings and your machine. So we're going to wait for this to finish, and I'm going to be back. Once the rendering is done, uh, you can just save it. So image, save as, and I'm just going to save it. Also, I forgot to mention one more thing. Let's close it. Um, in here, um, you can choose, uh, where is it? I think it's here. Yes, dimensions. You can choose the dimensions of the image, which is important. In my case, it's 1440p, 16 by 9 ratio. And also in... Um, under uh, under uh, render tab, you should go to the very bottom. I think where, where was it? Um, I never remember where it is. I think it's in here. Output, yes, here under output. Uh, choose the quality of your file. In my case, it's TIFF sixteen bit because that's the best quality you can get. I mean, you could go with the um, where is it here? Open EXR, which is better quality, but it causes problems when you save um, um, I mean when you load it to Photoshop it just changes colors and color space is just bloody annoying so I don't use it TIFF is good enough if you're gonna get a clean TIFF you can get a very beautiful renders all my renders on my portfolio are made of TIFFs and no problem so you know uh, the most important part in here is to go with 16 bit because that just simply creates more um, uh, more tonality more quality um, JPEG side bit which are shit and 16 bit always going to you know give you a bit more leeway for for editing because we want to edit this right so so anyway guys um that's it in the next video probably going to show you how to edit this in photoshop um you could use other programs like gimp doesn't matter really uh just basic principles but um you know our render looks really good everything is peachy so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the vid give us a like and sub if you did enjoy the video and i'll catch you in the next one